Now that we've had some time to kick back, relax, look at all the different features that DaVinci Resolve has, and really see what the best is, I'm gonna share with you the top five features in DaVinci Resolve 18 that you just need to know about. Like, it's just required at this point, honestly. So starting off with number one, we have the Surface Tracker, and honestly, this tool is a very big deal because it allows you to track an object or video to your footage. It's going to warp as if it's stuck to that. It, it's super cool. So let me show you how to do it. So in DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna go to Fusion, of course. I want to go ahead and track my logo on her backpack right here. There's a lot of different ripples in here, there's a lot of different folds, and it's pretty tan, right? So you're probably not gonna actually pick up on some of these creases. So what I'm gonna do is pull up the Select Tools menu by hitting Shift Spacebar, and then typing in Color Curves and placing it right there. Now, I'm gonna actually just crank the heck out of my darks and my lights like this so that I'm actually just making a ton of contrast in this area so that our tracker can pick up on it. Now you can see from what it was before to what it is now, there's a lot more detail there. So our tracker is gonna actually have more to work with. Next, I'll add in the surface tracker. So with the surface tracker selected, make sure that you're on bounds in the inspector tab and then draw your outline of the area you want this logo to go in. Now move over to track and this is where all of the stuff starts to happen. So we're gonna go to quality first. Let's be honest, better is better. So let's put it on better. And then we're gonna move the motion range up just a little bit. Normally you can leave these as default, but honestly, there's a lot of motion in this one. So I'm just gonna bring it up to about 200 like this. Now I'm going to hit track forward and then reverse. So I'm gonna let it do its thing. So once you're done tracking, you can go ahead and add in whatever logo you want to the surface tracker node just like this and then remove the color curves because we don't need it anymore. The inner circle logo is getting cut off and it's kind of a lot. So what I'm gonna do is go to overlay placement right here and then under positioning, you says interactive canvas. Well, I wanna go to sliders because then it allows us to change the zoom if, it, if our logo is too big and the position X and Y so that we can get it really the way that we want it. And then once you've got it positioned, we need to actually make it blend in a little bit. So we just drop the opacity to really make it look like it's part of the image. And there you go. All right, so moving on to the second feature that you need to know about, this is called the depth map. Now I know I've talked about this a few times, but honestly, it is really freaking cool. Essentially what it allows you to do is select parts of our footage based on what is closest to our camera versus what's far away. So to use it on the edit page, what you're gonna do is duplicate your clip by holding alt and clicking and dragging your clip, then go to effects. Now open up the panel like this, go to effects overlay, and then type in depth map. Drag it in on the top clip right here, and you can see now we get all these different shades and these different depths. So essentially, what is the darkest in the image is farthest away, and what's lightest is closest. So with that knowledge, we can have some more fun. What we're going to do is go to effects in the inspector tab, then turn on adjust map levels like this. Now I'm gonna bring up the far limit a lot, just like this, and then bring down the near limit to really make sure she's like really white like this, right? We wanna focus only on this lady. So once you've done that and our quality is better, which we don't care about faster, we can turn off the depth map preview like this. And I'm gonna drag something actually in between. So now you can see that she's standing out from the background and from the black bars. And I just think this is a really cool looking effect. And you can do a ton more with the depth map. I haven't even began to scratch the surface of what is possible with the depth map. All right, hold up. I'm excited to announce the launch of my inner circle. Now, this is a community for editors and creators who are wanting to learn, grow, and succeed in their craft. With the new trainings every two weeks, you're gonna be able to have access to the best tools and information out there. This also gives you access to a supportive community of people who want to grow and succeed as editors and creatives just like you. If you've ever needed help or have questions on topics like DaVinci Resolve or editing, 
writing, and freelancing, and more, then this is the perfect place for that. If you want to get involved in this community and take your editing skills to the next level, then click the join button in the link in the description. Now, back into it. Now, you know what's super annoying? Not being able to use Resolve when you generate proxies. With that said, DaVinci Resolve 18 decided to give us a standalone proxy generator, which is our number three feature. So this will allow you to create proxies automatically while we're still working in DaVinci Resolve. So to do this, what you're gonna do is go to your start menu or your finder and type in Blackmagic Proxy Generator. Then open that bad girl up. Now Windows is gonna pop up and say, hey, which folder do you want me to watch? So this is actually really cool because once you assign this watch folder, anything you put into that folder will automatically be turned into proxies without you having to think about it. Then it's going to just import it into Resolve and do its magic behind the scenes. So it's actually super powerful. So I'll go ahead and select the folder that my footage is in and hit start at the top and it's automatically going to start to render your proxies just like this. And you can see that that thing is hauling. So once it's done, you don't actually have to hit stop because it's going to continue to watch the folder if you import something else that needs to be generated as a proxy. It's going to just do it automatically in the background. In DaVinci Resolve, because I generated this as a proxy, we have a new icon on our footage. And what this is saying is, hey, this is a proxy. So if you want to turn it off though, you'll go to playback and then under proxy handling, you can either prefer proxies, which is currently what we're doing, or you can prefer camera originals or you just disable it all together. So by selecting prefer camera originals, you can see that that little icon goes away. But when I turn it back on, you'll see there it is. This is a proxy. All right. So if you enjoy new features as much as I do, then a like on this video would actually help more people to see all of these cool tools and features for themselves. And then they can work better and faster and all of that other stuff. Also, don't forget to click the notifications bell so you do not miss out on the newest videos out there. So coming in at number four, we have the subtitles import. Now, while DaVinci Resolve does not auto transcribe subtitles just yet, it did take a really big step forward. Gone are the days of needing to listen to your video and then manually type out the subtitles. You can use a tool like Temi or Descript and get the SRT file and then just copy and paste it right into your timeline. So it's, it's actually that simple. So we're going to grab our SRT file like this and just drag it in. You can see DaVinci Resolve immediately recognizes, hey, this is an SRT file. Let me just transcribe it. It does actually keep to our pacing like this. And it is so freaking cool because seriously, I used to manually write out all of this for all my clients and it was terrible. So I am super grateful for this. So finally, the fifth feature that you need to know about is the object mask tool. Now this is in addition to the magic mask tool. So essentially it allows you to highlight any object and mask it out with only a few clicks of a button and it works surprisingly well. So what you're going to do is take whatever footage you have here. You're going to go to the color tab and then go over to the magic mask area right here. Now by default, it's on magic mask object. So you're gonna make sure that this button right here, the picker edition is selected, and then we're gonna turn on the toggle mask overlay. So currently you're not gonna see anything. However, if I just draw on our object like this, you'll see that our car is actually highlighted. So now I can just draw a few more areas to really make sure that we're getting a good selection like this. And if you don't want something, you can just hit the minus picker tool right here and make sure we're removing, let's just say the road because we don't want the road to show up. After that, we're gonna change our quality from faster to better because it literally just looks so much better. And then we are going to hit track forward and reverse like that. Once it's done tracking, we can go ahead and refine it and do whatever you want here. Let's just say I want to remove all of this. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to add alpha output, connect the blue alpha points together just like this. And you can see though, it's still there. That's because we have our magic mask overlay on. So if we turn it off, you can see our background is completely gone. Now we can go ahead on the edit page, bring it up to let's say video layer three, 
grab our footage again, drop it below. So now we have our background there again. And now we can go ahead, grab some kind of title, drag it in between. And if we move forward, you can see that our car will actually cover up and then reveal the text just like that. So now that you know about these top five new features, there is one old tool that you really should not be using anymore. Click here to see why or check out another video instead. Till the next one, peace.